So, you've seen some people on YouTube put crazy large batteries inside iPods and get insane hours of battery life, and you're thinking, hey, haven't you already done this before? And you'd be correct. In 2021, I showed you how to put a 3000 milliamp hour battery inside an iPod 4th generation and get over three times the original battery life. But what if you wanted even more power? Well, it turns out you can. With a thicker 40 gigabyte model iPod 4th generation, you can fit an even larger battery inside. And that got me thinking. We carry around power banks with large batteries to charge our devices every day. So why not cut out the middleman and just put the power bank battery directly inside the iPod? After taking measurements and doing a little shopping, I was able to do just that. The internal setup is just like before. We have the trimmed iFlash board tucked inside the original battery slot, while the larger 5000 mAh cell takes up the space where the hard drive used to be. We can even fit an iPhone 7 Plus Taptic engine in the space below the battery. So how much more battery life can we get out of this? Well, here's the battery test. That's right, with this new battery we're getting over 3 days of continuous music playback on a single charge. Now if you use Rockbox then the runtime will be lower, but it's still over 6 times the original Apple spec, which is pretty damn amazing. Now I have a confession to make here. This isn't something that I've recently done. In fact, I started research and building this larger battery iPod over one year ago. So why the delay in making the video then? Well, I wanted to do a long-term test of this iPod and see how the battery health would decline over time. For the past 12 months, I've been taking this iPod on my daily commutes, using it every day and taking notes on run times. When I used it for two hours a day, I found that the iPod battery was lasting just over a month between charges, and over the course of a year, I've had to charge it less than 10 times. After a year, there hasn't been any significant decline in battery health either, and I'm still getting as good battery life as I did when the iPod was first built. This is probably because the longer battery life means that I'm having to charge it less often, and there's a correlation between charge cycles and lithium cell aging. So not only are we getting longer run times, we're also getting better battery health. As for how to build this for yourself, I've linked my previous video down below, and I won't be repeating the steps here because the method is exactly identical. The only difference is that we're using a thicker iPod, and it's 40 gigabytes, so not the 20 gigabyte thinner model. The power bank I extracted the lithium cell from is the 5000 mAh Juice Brander battery. But you can just buy the standalone cell from AliExpress or eBay. The lithium cell has a size designation of 955465, which means it's 9.5mm thick, 54mm wide, and 65mm tall. You can also use a 955565 cell, and it should fit the same. If you're using the cell from a power bank, just make sure to remove the original BMS board, which is this bit here and replace it with one from the iPod's battery. You'll also need to do a bit of soldering and PCB cutting, so bear that in mind. All in all, this is one mod I highly recommend just for the peace of mind of having a month long battery life. As a matter of fact, this is now my daily iPod and I take it everywhere I go. Let me know in the comments below if you've tried this mod too and how it went, I'm curious to know. But otherwise, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.